Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today we're playing some Dinah Soul Steeper. Looking at our opening hand, two lands. Um, not too much follow-up with only the two lands, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and take the mulligan. New hand. Three lands is good. Do need double green for the bow of Nyla, but it's not terrible. We have gold green charm for a little bit of removal. Pest infestation for more removal. Pernicious deed for even more removal. No card draw, though. But we do have life gain on the bow of Nyla. Uh, let's risk this one and see what we get. Our commander is black green for legendary 1 3 Dryad Druid. Whenever we gain life, each opponent loses one life and one. Sacrifice another creature, she gets X0 town to turn, where X is the sacrificed creature's power. We did win the die roll, we do get to go first. For our turn, we get Crushing Disappointment. Let's play the Temple of Malady and see what's on top. We have Engulfing Slagworm. Let's uh, put that on bottom for now. Pass it off to our opponents. Our first opponent is Niambi, Esteemed Speaker. White blue for a legendary 2 1 human cleric, Flash. When there's the battlefield, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, you gain life equal to that creature's mana value. One white blue, tap, discard a legendary card, draw two cards. We have a Plains followed by a Soul Ring into play for them. Never like seeing that kind of stuff. Followed by Wayfarer's Bobble. Definitely needs a reprint. Over to our next opponent, who is Horde of Notions. Wooberg or White Blue Black Red Green for a legendary 5 5 elemental, Vigilance Trample Haste. Wooberg or White Blue Black Red Green, you may play target elemental card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Battle gets Sanctuary into play for them. Last but not least is the Scorpion God. 3 Black Red for a legendary 6 5 creature god, of course. Whenever a creature with a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it dies, draw a card. 1 Black Red, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on another target creature. And when this dies, return to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Our turn brings us Accomplished Alchemist. Let's play a Swamp. I think at this point, we will just pass it off. Back to Niambi. Let's see what they're doing with the turn. Looks like a Wayfair Bubble. Yep, it's getting cracked. Going for an island. There it is. Over to the Horde of Notions. Interested in seeing all the decks, really. I don't run to the Scorpion God too much. Of course, I run to the Scarab God all, all the time in comparison. And occasionally the Locust God. Horde of Notions, I see occasionally. Niambi, I haven't seen at all. Can't be Vista into play for the Horde. The Scorpion God's turn sees a Mountain into play. And Lightning Greaves. That's not going to be too good. Comes our turn, we get Gifted Atherborn. We do have double black, so not too bad there. Let's play the Access Tunnel. And the Gifted Atherborn. Death Touch and Lifelink. Not too many people want to block it. Let's pass it off. Niambi with Toothy Imaginary Friend. Okay, didn't see that coming. It will get quite large though. <laughs> They'll add the Horror of Notions player to search their library for a pure imaginative rascal. They could have it. I mean, I've seen weirder things. I doubt that they do though. To the Horde of Notions turn. Let's see if they have any ramp to get going. Morphic pool into play. Still have two green in the mana pool. Oh, there's some blue. Nope, they just tap it down and pass it off. The Scorpion God's turn. Mountain into play. Comes our turn, we get Rampant Growth. Um, yeah, guess we better. Let's go ahead and get another green source out of the deck. Forest into play. Let's go to attacks. We'll attack in time, be see if they want to block with Toothy. It's early enough, I really don't expect it to happen. Damage is good, they are down to 38, we are up to 42, let's pass it off. Toothy will trigger for the first time this game, it gets a 1-1 counter thanks to drawing cards. Niambi's turn proper, we have an island into play. That's 5 mana for now, let's see what they're going to do with the turn. Baron Mastered Wizard, sacrifice a permanent return target creature to its owner's hand. Okay, that's an interesting include. Also makes me suspicious. There was a recent posting about Niambi as a reanimator deck. I'm wondering if that had some inspiration for this. We have an attack. It's off into us. Yeah, that's legit. Damage is good. We go back down to 40. Horde of Notions turn sees a Sea of Clouds come into play, followed by Mana Crypt. Earth. 
Bring to light. They're going to get Siege Rhino. Okay, there we go. There was some confusion about them being unable to cast the Siege Rhino, but I guess we got resolved. Siege Rhino into play. We'll lose three life, so will each other opponent, and they will gain three life. I'm just glad it's not equal to the life lost. We go down to 37. The Scorpion God down to 37. Niambi down to 35. The Horde of Notions up to 43. To the Scorpion God's turn, we have Inventor's Fair into play. Wolf Station. Yeah, that's going to be good. Whenever a creature dies, if it had a minus one, minus one counter on it, they get to put another one on another creature, and so on, etc., etc., until all the creatures could potentially die. That usually needs other pieces to work, though. Comes our turn, we get Shadow Sphere. Yay, more lifelink. Let's go ahead and get down the Accomplished Alchemist. I want to be able to cast that Pest Infestation pretty quick. And we'll go to attacks. This time we'll attack the Scorpion God. Uh, just because I don't want the Gifted Atherborn to actually end up dying in the next couple of turns. Damage is good there, down to 35. We are back up to 39. Let's pass off the turn. Over to Nambi. We have a Sea of Clouds into play for them as well. Uh, Baron Master Wizard, two to the sacrifice to bounce any permanent. We will have to keep an eye out for that. Good thing we don't rely too much on equipment. Nambi comes into play, she will trigger. When she enters the battlefield, you may return a legendary creature card. Nambi returns Toothy to the hand. Interesting. Fibblethup the Lost. Nice. They get to draw a card. They will have to discard a card. Let's see what it is. It is a Maria Shepherd. Okay. Over to the Horror of Notions player. Mana Crypt will trigger for the first time this game. Let's see if they get that bonk. They win the flip. No damage to him this turn. Bountiful Promenade into play. Eternal Witness getting back bring to light. Okay. More tutoring. Horde of Notions has the Rhino on the attack. It's off into the Niambi player. Alright, at least it's not at our face. To be fair, we could just block it with our 2-5, so that works out. We have a response. Fabletip being sacrificed to Baron the Master Wizard. They're returning the Siege Rhino to their opponent's hand. Over to the Scorpion God. Six cards in hand after the draw. Four mana currently might drop another to make it to five. The Scorpion God is a five drop. Unfortunately, you do want to get some minus one, minus one counters on something. And it does cost three, so probably some other means. Uh, they could wipe out, what, three creatures to start with and weaken one of ours? Not the best. The Scorpion God does come down for that player. We got some Greaves. All right, so where's the Scorpion God gonna be swinging? Ooh, they swing nowhere and we get a Noxious Gearhulk. Unfortunately, we are not drawing any lands, so let's uh, get in that crushing disappointment because we're disappointed about it. Ooh, still no lands. That is a sad face. All right, I think we're just going to pass it off. We will have to discard a card. Uh, we don't have any recursion right now, and I think Golgari Charm isn't going to help out too much in this situation. We could use it to destroy the, uh, what is this, wolf eye infestation, but... I think we're going to get rid of it for now. We do have Pernicious Deed if we need some kind of board wipe later. So let's just do that. Pass it off. Niambi's turn. Flood Strand into playing Cracked. All of the players lost two lives from our crushing disappointment, by the way. We are at 37. Niambi at 36. Horde of Notions at 41. And the Scorpion God at 33. They get a Tundra into play, followed by Toothy Imaginary Friend. They're going to make us look for Toothy. They're going to make us look for Peer. Uh, we will fail to find, but let's shuffle up the deck. Hopefully we get some lands on top. Niambi is discarding Thalia, Heretic, Cathar to draw some cards. Toothy is going to get larger. That's not my favorite. Also, when Toothy dies, they'll draw a card for each 1-1 counter on it. Over to the Horde of Notions turn. The Bonk Crypt does the triggering. Let's see if they get smacked with it. They do not. They win the flip again, still at 41. Let's see if they can find a red source. They kind of don't. Reflecting pool into play. That's... Gotta say, I gotta say it again. I just don't like that land card. It's Siege Rhino. We're going to be losing another 3 life. Down to 34, and I'm going to be down to 33. The Scorpion God down to 30. Horde of Notions back up to 44. To the Scorpion God, is this where the shenanigans begin? A oh, minus one, minus one counter on the Eternal Witness. There it goes. Blow Fight Plus Station will trigger it. The Scorpion God player will draw a card. They're going to put a minus one, minus one counter on Baron, Master Wizard. There's some more triggers, and I imagine Niambi is not long for this world. And there goes Niambi. Siege Rhino getting a little bit weaker. It's a 3-4 now. We have a land into play. Let's see if the Scorpion God does anything else. They can put another minus one, minus one counter on something with the Scorpion God itself. No attacks out of the Scorpion God going to roll over to us. 
They do have to discard a card, though. Let's see what it is. Increasing Vengeance. All right. We have a Death Reap Ritual. Card draw, it's nice. But we need to get something down here. Let's go ahead and get down Sir Conrad the Grim. And I think we'll pass it off there. I want to leave the Death Toucher up just in case the Scorpion God decides to swing ass. It'd only really save us for a turn, but I'd rather be able to kill something. Okay, now Ambi's turn. Got a bunch of mana getting tapped right now. Hopefully not a board wipe. Yeah, okay. A Chroma Angel of Wrath. Not a board wipe, but uh, protection from half our deck isn't the best. She does have haste. That's always a bit unfortunate. Off into the Scarab God. Toothy off into the Horde of Notions player. Ooh, we have Empiric Tutor. Okay. So the Scorpion God going to get something to the deck and they'll lose two life. Damage is good. Horde of Notions down to four. The Scorpion God down to 22. Two Horde of Notions. Mana Crypt does the thing. They win the flip again. Three for three. That's a forest into play. Still no red source. To be fair, don't know that they need it. I haven't seen an elemental yet. There's Bring to Light again. Let's see what they tutor for. It's Vizier of Many Faces. I wonder what that's going to be. And Horde of Notion quits the game. Okay. I believe they quit the game based on the chat because they're having trouble getting Magic Online to deal with the Bring to Light. There was some trouble last time they tried to get the Siege Rhino as well. Hope you can catch another game where it works for you. Good luck. Over to the Scorpion God. Let's see what they do with the turn. Dynamics have changed. On the bright side, we don't have to deal with the life gain from the Horde of Notions player anymore. But we still aren't drawing any lands, and that is unfortunate. Nest of Scarabs. Oh no. Okay, so this one is whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create that many 1-1 one, one black insect creature tokens. Could get out of hand. Comes our turn, we get Essence Warden. That could be pretty good. Let's go ahead and play it. Now our problem is going to be the Scorpion God can kill it right off the bat. I'm hoping that a Chroma is going to keep pressure on them long enough for us to actually do something cool. But we'll see. Let's cast our commander. Yep, there's the response from the Scorpion God. I think Essence Warden is no longer here for the world. There it is. And there's a bunch of triggers. Sir Conrad will also trigger. I do have a backup plan for this. Sir Conrad with a Shadow Sphere always seemed like a good idea. Unfortunately, Sir Conrad will get a little bit weaker. Nest of Scarabs will trigger again. They'll get another pest token. Sorry, an insect token. My mistake. We make the pest. Okay, let's go to combat. We'll swing into the Scorpion God. Why not? Damage is good. They do not block. They're down to 19. Now I'd be down to 31. Scorpion God down to 18. And in the second main, let's go ahead and play the Shadow Spear. Let's tap our Accomplished Alchemist to equip it. We should get two green mana. There we go. And we'll equip it to Sir Conrad. If he survives, should be a very big boon to our strategy. Let's pass it off. To Nyambi's turn. Hopefully they're not too keen on what we're doing and worrying more about the Scorpion God, although they do have a Chroma, so I'm not really counting on it. What I am hoping for is the Scorpion God kind of leaves us alone for a minute. Now I'll be straight to attacks. That's never a good thing. It's off into us. Yeah, we'll be taking six. Damage is good. We're down to 30. Let's see what Nyambi's going to do in the second main phase. Going straight to attacks and holding up all that mana is something that always worries me. Isparia Supreme Judge. One of my favorite white blue cards of all time. I know she gets a bad rap, but I defeated a table of five other players with this at the head, so I'm just saying. To the Scorpion God's turn. They can activate him twice. That wouldn't kill Sir Conrad, so I'm not too worried about it. Wouldn't actually kill any of our creatures, although it would make our Ath gifted Atherborn rather a little bit, uh, um, how would I put it? Just kind of there. Death Dutch and Lifelink both need power, so I guess that's a thing. They would get more insects, which is fine with me because we have Pernicious Deed and we can do zero for its ability to destroy the tokens. They're putting a minus one, minus one counter on an insect. So they'll get another insect. Sir Conrad will trigger. Hmm. Don't know that I like where this is going. Potentially this is going to go infinite here and Sir Conrad can win us the game. Especially if they keep targeting the insect. Going to go check the chat. Dino triggers again. Our opponents lose another life. So yeah, I think they're just going to 
toss the game, perhaps. Well, no, they can't just toss the game. They could get rid of themselves, but they can't get rid of the other opponent. Perhaps they're drawing a card to look for an answer? Okay, so it ended. There's a bunch of insect tokens. Uh, Sir Conrad only cares when something dies. Another creature, not only your own, so... While our deck doesn't run combos, but just strong synergies... We had one going there for a second. We're up to 36. Now I'm be down to 25. The Scorpion God down to 12. Sir Conrad also got another minus one, minus one counter. Yogmoth Thron Physician. Uh-oh. Sir Conrad may not be long for this world. Yep, there goes an insect. We do some more draining stuff. Yep, Sir Conrad is definitely the target. Although, <laughs> it's a legit target at this point. The Scorpion God down to six. Sir Conrad on his last legs. And there it is, the last activation. Sir Conrad is down. They are down to three on the uh, Scorpion God side. We're up to 42. Nyambi down to 19. Dine is getting a minus one, minus one counter. That's a sad face. Yogmoth was activated. They'll take another life loss. They put a minus one, minus one counter on Toothy. That's down to three positive counters. They do get another insect. They also put a minus one, minus one counter on Asperia as well. Ooh, and they bring themselves down to zero life. Well, that's unfortunate, but I guess they went down swinging. Comes our turn, we get Vine Witch Coven. Good game to the Scorpion God. So, miss, whenever we gain life, we may pay a black. If we do, return target creature card from a graveyard to our hand. That could be good, except swinging into the uh, Nyambi player is not our best option at the moment. So, let's go ahead and play the Bow of Nyla. One of the reasons it is in here, because it does the 1-1 one, one counters, it also deals 2 damage to some things with flying, but also helps us gain 3 life, and if we need to, shuffle 4 cards from our graveyard into our deck. Sorry, that's bottom of library. My mistake. It is in any order, though. But let's go ahead and pass it off. We have Matt up for the activation. Unfortunately, we still aren't drawing any lands, so I don't know how we're going to win this one unless we get a little bit lucky. We do have, luckily, a large amount of life, but that's probably not going to last too terribly long. Ooh, Audric Lunok Marshall, that's not good. Okay, all their stuff is going to Flying First Strike, Trample, Vigilance, and Protection from Black and Red at each combat. So, on the bright side, no lifelink. Unfortunately, Audric also gets haste. Uh, so, we're looking at, what, 19 damage? So we have two turns to try to whip this into shape? There it is, we go down to 23. Alright, before we get to the end step, I just want to make sure I activate the Bow of Nala to gain 3 life. We're up to 26. Dyna triggers. Now I'd be down to 18. Ooh, we still don't get a land. So I think at this point, activate Bow of Nyla. Gain 3 life. Dyna will trigger. Unfortunately for us, that still leaves us one match short of a Noxious Gearhulk, which could really save our butt right now. If we attack with the Gifted Atherborn, they'll all get protection from black and a Chroma Styles Vigilance anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If we play Deadly Brew, they'll also just sacrifice Toothy most likely. And unfortunately for us, they'll just draw a bunch of cards. Let's tap to add some green, and we'll use Pest Infestation to destroy their Soul Ring. There we go, we got two pests out of it, not too bad. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. We'll probably live through this next attack, um, but we need to get Noxious Gearhulk down and maybe knock out the Asperia. It looks like we got something at the end of turn. Don't like seeing that mana tapping. Now I'm be a steam speaker coming down. Alright, so what will they return? They're returning Audric. Oh, they decide not to. Okay. Uh, Chroma's will. Creatures you control will gain double strike is the part I'm worried about. And the lifelink. Oh boy. Yeah, that lifelink. That's not the best. Alright, well, everything's going to be dying anyway. Might as well sacrifice some pests to see what we can do here. She'll trigger again. We're only going to get them down to 15 before they get a bunch of lifelinks, so... Yep, I think this game's over. Good game to our opponent. We just couldn't draw any more lands, so I'm going to have to go and investigate how many lands I put in this deck. Sometimes the algorithm really, really hates when you have 37 lands, but really, really loves you when you have 38 and you get land flooded. It just always seems to happen that way. All right, two Niambis attack. This is it. We'll be taking 24, 34, 40, and 44. So what would that be, negative 13? And there it is, negative 13. Good game to our punt. And there it is, one point to us, four points to the winner. I can see that. Nyambi is a good commander to put out in front and be kind of under the radar. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. See if we can do anything about not getting those lands. 
Okay, here's the deck. 37 lands, and like I said before, on Magic Online, every time I have a deck that has 37 lands, it seems to really hate giving me lands. Although if I put it up to 38, sometimes it'll love giving me lands instead, or just be normal. I don't know what's up with that, that's just been my personal experience for the vast majority of my games. So one of the things we can look at, of course, is increasing the ramp. There's not too much ramp in here at the moment, considering we have a lot of two drops, a lot of three drops, some four drops. And by the time we get to the five, six, and seven drops, I expected to have lands, but might need to reconsider. In either case, like I said, this deck does not have any combos. It does have some strong synergies, and <laughs> there's a couple of really strong cards on the deck. I'm going to point those out for now, but for the next game, definitely adding some more land search. We do have some land search in the deck. I do want to point out Evolution Charm. We have Rampant Growth. Secure Tribe Elder so we can have a creature die. Death Sprout is one of my favorite spells for that. Instant Speed Kill, go get a land. And we have Environmental Sciences just because it does gain us the two life. Other than that, we depend on our card draw, but apparently that's not enough. One of the cards I did want to point out, however, is Wound Reflection. This card is a little bit more on the more expensive side. It does double the life loss to your opponents though, and it can be used politically a little bit, although it does make you quite the threat. Other than that though, it doesn't have any combos on the deck, it's just a really strong card. Beyond that though, we did see, I think, Engulfing Slagworm. If you put a lure effect on this, it can wipe somebody's board and you can gain a ton of life. Now while she only triggers our commander, Dino the Soul Seeper, per event of life gain and not per the amount of life gain, I still think this is a really good include because it can potentially just trigger and get rid of something. Now it won't get rid of things that have indestructible. It will get rid of things that have protection from green if you run into that though because it does not target the creature. It just simply gets destroyed. I figure it's worth an include just to threaten some stuff out. And there are a number of lure effects in green and there's even a green black one. I think Gaze of, is it, uh, Gaze of the Gorgon from way back but it is 4 mana so your mileage may vary there. Sir Conrad we saw do an awesome job mostly because the Scarab God had half of the other combo on their side of the table. Unfortunately, they were much weaker than Niambi and just couldn't beat out that Akroma. Something I really wanted to do in the game and didn't get to is play that Noxious Gear Hulk to get a bunch of life and have Menace on it. Akroma having Vigilance and then the Aldric coming down though. This isn't a combat deck, this is a Slight Control and Bleeder deck. Aristocrat style a little bit with Blood Artist, Zillaport Cutthreat and all that kind of thing. Anyway, here's the deck. Don't want to get too far into it. Need to make changes, especially to the ramp package, apparently. But we are going to stay away from the combos because everybody does that, and we do play casual, more casually here. If you build it with combos, though, power to you. Just inform your friends or people you'll sit down with if they're, you know, if you're in a more friendly game that, yes, I run combos. Of course, if you saw any cards that you might want to purchase for yourself this game, Sealed Product or Sleeves to protect all of the glory, please consider using the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. It helps out the channel and doesn't cost you anything extra. On to the next game with Dinosaur Soul Steeper. See if we can't up that rent package like I keep saying. And until the next video, stay safe out there.